Okay, the, the YouTube has started. I'm just going to share um, the agenda now. Anybody can just confirm that it's okay on your screen? <clears throat> yep, looks good. Yeah, that's fine. Go ahead, Jane. <clears throat> Mayor Duma. Good morning, everyone. This is the regular council meeting of the Township of South Algonquin for November 4th, 2020, commencing at 9.03 a.m. Good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning. Are, there any, are there any additions or amendments to the agenda? Holly? I, I, I have one to note, um, I'm going to add a resolution to the agenda, um, which is to for council to direct staff to provide a letter to Minister Yakabuski regarding the transfer of the Lyle landfill site. All right, thank you. We'll tie that on to the end of the resolution section. Thank you very much. Um, prior to going to the agenda, I visually confirm that all members of the council are present at this time. Um, so I have a resolution moved by Councillor Vermeer, seconded by Councillor Collins. Be it resolved that the Council for the Corporation of the Township of South Algonquin adopts the agenda as circulated and amended for the regular council meeting of November 4th, 2020. And I will call the vote because uh, the agenda's up. I don't have the visual to see the hand showing of hands. So Councillor Collins. Four. Councillor Florent. Four. Councillor Harper. Four. Councillor Bongo. Four. Councillor Shala. Four. Councillor Vermeer. Four. It's carried. With the business before us this morning, does any member of council wish to disclose a pecuniary interest? None noted. Thank you. Holly, if you could advance the agenda a little bit for me, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, as noted, we do not have any delegations, peti petitions, or presentations at this point in time. So um, going up to number six, we have minutes of the previous meetings. And I have a resolution moved by Councillor Florence, seconded by Councillor Shala. Um, be it resolved that the Council for the Corporation of the Township of South Algonquin adopts the minutes of the regular council meeting of October 7, 2020. Sorry, November, um, October 7th, 2020 is circulated. Any discussion? Uh, Mayor? Mayor? Okay, Councillor Bongo first. Okay, sure. Um, I was wondering if um, I could have my name attached to the little blurb about the, um, uh, the review of the COVID policies, uh, specifically me asking about um, uh, two people from different households in one vehicle to have masks on. Um, I'm, I'm totally okay with being known as, as, a, as the counselor that's very um, uh, cautious about COVID uh, just because I think it's a super important thing. And if we do have a transmission event, um, I, I want it known that I take it very seriously. Okay, we can make that um, amendment. Holly, you've got that. Bongo, can you just suggest what part of the meeting, was that uh, within um, new business? Do you remember where you stated that? Um, no, it doesn't matter. We can go back and listen to the audio. Yes. We'll add yeah, I, I may have mentioned it in the additions part of okay. the meeting. Um, and uh, I think it was discussed in the uh, administrative report. Okay eventually but uh, but yeah just you know if if you want to tack my name on there and, and and the fact that you know we did discuss the importance of having masks on especially in in vehicles and such very good thank you councillor bongo uh councillor florent yes motion number 20-147 uh there's a word in there fiber optic i don't think there is any such word it should be three separate words fiber optic cable Okay, thank you for that. Any other um, amendments to the minutes? So the resolution will now read, uh, be it resolved that the Council for the Corporation of the Township of South Algonquin adopts the agenda, oh, sorry, going down here. Uh, the resolution moved by Councillor Florence, seconded by Councillor Shallow will now read, be it resolved that the Council for the Corporation of the Township of South Algonquin adopts the minutes 
of the regular council meeting of October 7, 2020 as circulated and amended. I would call the vote then on this uh, resolution. Councillor Collins? Oh. Councillor Florent? Or. Councillor Harper? Or. Councillor Shala? Or. Councillor Vermeer? Or. So it's carried. The next resolution, I have it moved by Councillor Bongo, seconded by Councillor Harper. Be it resolved that the Council for the Corporation of the Township of South Algonquin adopts the minutes of the Human Resources Administration and Public Relations Committee meeting of October 20, 21, 2020 as circulated. Are there any comments on those minutes? All right, hearing none, I would call the vote. Uh, Councillor Collins. Four. Councillor Florent. Four. Councillor Harper. Four. Uh, Councillor Bongo. Four. Councillor Shala. Four. Councillor Vermeer. Four. It's carried. So um, we are now at item number seven in the agenda, committee staff and council reports. And uh, first report up is the fire report with um, Chief Kruger. Is Dawn on, Kali? No, um, oh. but if you have any questions, I do have access to him or I can follow up if there's any, any questions on that report. Um, I see it's very straightforward. And I think the only thing on there, I had seen somewhere that there was a request for a meeting date. Has that um, been yes. Okay. So actually I think what we'll do, Don just has one, <clears throat> excuse me, um, one item that he would like to propose into the 2021 budget. Um, he's done a staff, staff report on it. So if council is comfortable, instead of having an entire EMS meeting, I would re recommend that we, um, add it to the asset management waste meeting on the 25th of November. He'll provide the staff report. And if you have um, questions, you can contact him in advance of the meeting and then we can talk about it then. Uh, is there any objection Unless to that from any member of council? Hearing none, I think we would go forward with your recommendation, Holly. Was there something else you were going to say? I'm sorry I interrupted you. No, I was just going to ask if anyone else had any e other EMS items that they wanted to discuss. If you do, you can bring them to us outside of a council meeting. We can, we can plan for that. Okay, so the next report that we have up is from the Planning and Building Administrator. And... Um, I know Tracy's on with us. So Tracy, did you want to comment to this before I, we, do, we do the vote on it? No, uh, it's pretty um, self-explanatory. Um, I think if anybody has any questions, I can answer anything. The document on screen was uh, provided to everyone. So um, hearing no request to comment, I would then call, I will go forward with the resolution and I have it moved. Uh, by Councillor Shalla, seconded by Councillor Harper. Be it resolved that the Council for the Corporation of the Township of South Algonquin authorizes staff to proceed with the applica application received for the purchase of the unopened shore road allowance in oh. front of- Sorry, oh. Jane, that, that is for, this is a bylaw. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, for the oh. site plan agreement. There is also a um, shoreline road allowance as well within the, within the uh, package. It's just a resolution. Okay, I apologize. So we don't need resolutions at this point. This is just stuff. Okay, fair enough. Just, yeah, discussion. Thank you for keeping me on track. I appreciate that. Okay. Uh, Mayor, um, regarding that um, bylaw, if we could just drop that down a bit, I was just wondering if, I don't know if it shows an, ent an, uh, an entrance to each one of those properties all along there and it should it or should it not? Well, this is for the site plan agreement only. So this is for, to put a, a, a 
a buffer between the industrial use and the residential use. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to do with entrances. That is dealt with within the consent application. And we know that there is an easement um, on to benefit part one of that R plan that goes in behind. That's um, correct. However, uh, what I'm what I'm meant, what I'm getting at is all the individual driveways have driveways off of of Hill Street, and it doesn't show them, should it? Um, it almost appears that way that it it's off of the easement that we decided on about four or five months ago. It's in the legal description of for the consent. So this is a support. This site plan agreement is just a um, added condition as per the consent. But within the consent description, it only states that part one will have that access to that easement. Okay. Okay. I just want to make sure that we are not uh, interfering. Yeah. So with the only one that's going to have the benefit of the easement is part one, which is the garage. Okay. Thank you. And if I may, I have a question too. We're talking about the, the um, natural barrier um, on the one side, but is there, or the, sorry, not a natural barrier, the requirement to put in a, a, a vegetative barrier. Is there a vegetative barrier on the other side to the property that's, um, I would say to the west of that garage? I believe there is a bit of a buffer there. Um, it's my understanding. Um, it was never ever part of a requirement, um, okay. but in discussions with the property owner, um, they are fully aware the, you know, about the, the feelings of having that buffer there. So I don't imagine there's gonna be any trees or clear cut of that, of that portion of the land. Okay, all right, thank you. Any further questions of Tracy? Hearing none, thank you, Tracy. Um, so <clears throat> this, uh, this is just a, a bit of a simple report. Um, um, we are working on the website. I think everyone's gotten some emails about that. Um, the, the style guide we've moved forward um, with some of the correspondence that we've put out. Um, I did set a meeting um, for next Friday with the Algonquins of Ontario negotiation team, and that will be um, a public meeting. I just um, I just kind of worked that out yesterday. So we'll be um, providing notice as we do all. It'll be considered a special council meeting, and we'll we'll do that this afternoon. Um, we've sent out the newsletter and the waste calendar. Hopefully everyone's received those. Um, we're in the process of finalizing an eco museum report that will come in the December package. Um, we did receive the, the save restart funding, um, which can be spent, uh, in 2020 as well as 2021. Um, we're starting our audit this month. Um, Jen has been doing some uh, online learning as has Carla um, and the virtual treasurers meetings are starting. Um, so that's all of that. Um, and we did return the Canada Day grant. Um, so that's uh, money that has been returned because uh, they gave us a certain amount of time to do something online or virtual or, or figure out if we could move Canada Day and uh, we don't think that that's going to happen in 2020, so we've returned it, and we'll be re we will be applying for the 2021 funding um, in November as well. Does anyone have any questions on those items from me? I would just like to make a comment, Mayor Dumas. Uh, first time I've seen the chickadees on any of our logos. They look kind of nice on there. Thank you for that feedback. That's good. Um, so the next staff report was the 2020 strategic plan. Um, I did put an, a complete package, uh, a complete summary of the 2020 um, chart that we've been using in the package. So I'm not sure if everyone's had time to read that or if there's any items that you would like to discuss in there. Um, the gist of this report is that uh, when we when the strategic plan was written in 2016, the intention was that it would go 2016 to 2021. Um, that would make it renew in 2022, which as I've written in the report, I'm not sure is good timing in that there's potential that council could be in lame duck. 
Um, or, you know, does it make sense for a council to start um, a, an updated strategic plan in the last year of their ter term? Um, so that's kind of my summary. I don't know if anyone has any comments on the staff report itself or um, any of the items in that table. Does anyone have any comments? I just have um, a question. Go ahead, Councillor Bongo. Yeah, so um, as I recall, um, you know, we have the, uh, the broadband plan that uh, staff will be working on putting together. Um, just up until uh, this term is done, um, how are we doing for time? Uh, so when I look at your um, summary of the, the 2020 strategic plan update, um, there are a few things that uh, where you mentioned, you know, has not been done yet, has not been completed. Um, and of course, there's a whole bunch of things that, that, that we have also been doing and are ongoing. Um, I'm just wondering how many more things from the list can we fit into this year? Or have we sort of maxed out uh, our schedule and, and our staff resources at this time? Um, well, I think that's partially why I put this in the council package. So I think, um, you know, as we wrote the packet, the, um, or as the plan was written in 2016, there were some uh, high level ambitious goals. Um, some of those things have changed. Some of the requirements have changed or, or council has, you know, done research and determined that it's not a path that wants to be, that we want to follow or that is a priority at this point. So I think my intention was to highlight, you know, how staff is feeling about going into 2021 and the, the pressures around COVID. Um, I think I did spell out in that staff report that the priorities that I thought were, should we should be working at in 2021. And I, I think that's what I'm looking for council to tell me. And I think we've We've already established that by your recommendation to put funding into the uh, 2021 budget, that broadband is a priority. And uh, just uh, um, I would comment, and I was going to comment later on correspondence received for information, but the annual general meeting of Roma is happening, happening in January. And if council members have had an opportunity to look at it, there are a lot of issues and, and items that are going to be covered in that virtual conference that ties into what we have um, you know, as further identified in the current plan and broadband is one of them. So um, I think I would encourage members of council to look at that and, and let staff know as soon as possible if you wanted to attend the virtual Roma conference, because I think it's got a lot of things that help will help us tie the last two years of this term of council together on priority items. So that's my thought, Holly. So go ahead if you wish. No, I think, I think that um, I've broken this out kind of into two resolutions. The first one is, does council want to embark on a new strategic plan? And the second one is um, what we think we should be doing as we go into 2021 budget. So um, I guess there's opportunity for you to answer those questions separately. And that, that's kind of the reason that I spelled it out that way. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping to get some input on that. So I guess before, I don't know if you want to have that conversation at the same time or if we want to just continue to talk about what we're going to do about strategic planning first and then talk about 2021 priorities in the next staff report so can um, i ask sorry there if i could uh, it's Councilor collins, uh, Councilor collins first then Councilor shala thank you um we mentioned back at the end of 2000 and 18, uh, no, 2019, um, that a walking plan would be a good idea um, to set up around the Madawaska area, around the Bull Diamond, out onto that piece of land or something like that, to give some external recreation. Little did we know that COVID was going to come along. But that walking course, if you like, for want of a better um, term for it, still doesn't appear anywhere. And I think that walking course would be good for the residents here in Madawaska to give somewhere safe off of the highway, off of the roads that they can safely walk. Um, and that's not noted anywhere. It's not in the budget for 2021, 
and it obviously hasn't happened this year either. And I thought it was left, let's see if we can put some money together for this year. And it doesn't appear to have happened. So just bringing that to attention, and I know we've had lots of restraints this year, but I don't think it's a very expensive thing to put into place. And I think a lot of residents would be prefer with their walking to be off of Highway 60 in the roads, especially now winter is arriving. Thank you. All right, thank you for that feedback. So if I can just comment on that, I would say that that is less a strategic priority and more a project. Um, and I think um, we have seen staff, um, you know, get those projects mid year. So I think that in the next section where we talk about what we're going to do in 2021, that would be um, an appropriate time to add that if, if council agrees that that's something that we should be doing. Okay, I think that's, that's a good recommendation. Okay, and uh, Councillor Shala? Yes, I think it'd be an advantage uh, to a new council if we started it to give a new council an idea of where the, what the plan was for the township. So, and when it happened, uh, if a new, if a whole new council was elected, uh, then they could make the change if it wasn't finalized. Okay. So if the, if we did the process as good as we could, as far as we could. And, um, and then, like I said, if it was a new council, well, then they could uh, either um, adopt it or they could uh, add to it or whatever. I just think it would, it may be beneficial for going forward. Okay. That's good. That's great. Um, I think I, I included um, Strathroy's strategic plan. Um, I don't know if you had an opportunity to go through that. Um, one of the things I think I struggled with with this strategic plan that we have right now is that it was so inclusive and so detailed. Um, I think to me, uh, the intention of a strategic plan in the sense that Councillor Shala is talking about is, is strategic. It's, it's high level. It's what are the goals of the municipality? What is the intention that council sets for what it is we're supposed to be doing? Um, so if we move forward with a strategic plan, I would hope that our new plan would mirror something similar to what Strathroy has. Um, you know, 15 pages, the first couple pages says what we do, what we're defining ourselves as, um, what we believe the community wants of us, and then some very specific items um, that we can continue to loop back to. So as I've been writing um, staff reports, I've been trying as much as possible to relate everything we do to our strategic plan. So I think that would be a great tool for staff council um, interaction is just to have a, a clear, concise strat plan. And I think one of the things, and I appreciate you including that strategic plan, and I think it's something that going forward with our next strategic plan is the, they indicated a fair amount of public consultation in their process as it went forward. And um, I think that that's something that we will have to do that I, not have to do, that would be very beneficial for us to do is to have those public consultation processes as we go through the plan and then tie it into the high level. You know, you may get lots of ideas, but I like this plan. You need a plan that is, um, um, as, as indicated, high level and sets the, the goals for the township. And then the annual work process, you know, uh, ties it together yearly as well. So any other comments from any other members of council? I have a question for Holly. Um, our plan appears to be five years long. Uh, Strathroy's is nine years long. Mm -hmm. um, does that, what's the difference there? Well, actually, thank you for pointing that out, David. Um, that's part of the reason I like their plan. I, to me, again, I think strategic plans should be high level. What are we trying to accomplish? What are, what type of community are we trying to develop? Um, and I think 10, you know, nine or 10 years easily spans maybe three council terms. So, you know, we could, we could create it 
uh, based on public input and say, this is kind of the direction we're going. Um, you know, what is it that we hope our community will look like in 10 years? Um, I think four years for a strategic plan is, is pretty short. Um, but I think it, it, it really, as I said, if we could focus it and come up with some, some measurable outcomes and, and start to use it to, to better communicate with the, the uh, community as well. Because I think there's an opportunity in a strat plan to talk about the, the things that are different about South Algonquin. You know, like, for example, I've said a, a number of times, the fact that we don't have a county and all these places around us are doing great economic development things that's something that we need to clearly articulate in our strat plan. We're going to do what we can within kind of our realm, but we need help. So it, recreation, the same thing. Like what do we hope recreation in this community will look like in 10 years and how do we plan to get there? So I think 10 years, nine, 10 years is a great goal. And that, you know, it's a lot of efforts. Putting a strat plan together is, you know, it's public consultation, it's discussion, it's a lot of, discussion with staff and council. So I think, yeah, the longer, if we can put something really solid together and stick with it for 10 years, we can do some good accomplishments. Would it be better to run it on a council term basis, like four, eight, 12 years or something like that? Um, I, 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 I think that we could write that into the plan. So if we did so you might recall at the beginning of this term, we we I did a presentation on our strat plan and I tried really hard to say, what does this mean to this council? So I think we could do it in a way that, you know, at the beginning of each term, we could kind of put it up there and say, you know, is there things that we need to take out of this? Are there things that we are redirecting? Um, how are we informing it? But I think that should be part of the plan. So for example, um, seniors, seniors housing. So we put seniors housing in the 2016 plan. We brought CMHC here. We talked about it. We found out that really that's a private industry thing and a public private partnership is going to be required to do that. So is it time to update our strat plan and say, this is maybe not something that council, this is something council can lobby for, but it's not something that we're going to run in house. So I think having the ability written into your plan to change those things or update them as information becomes available or as things change, for example, broadband, we could spend a year, um, you know, working hard towards getting broadband here and then somebody could turn on a switch on a satellite and, and that problem went away. So I think being able to create goals and then being able to modify those as the council changes, as the things in, in the community change, as the world changes is really important too, but it should be written into your plan that that's what we're gonna do. Perfect. Good points. Yeah. And that makes it a viable living document then, that, that ability to do that. Any yeah. other comments? Did I hear someone? Okay. All right, Holly. So yeah, I guess, I guess um, that's some great discussion. And, and what we're trying to decide is, do we do it in 2021? Do we, do we start to recreate our strat plan in 2021? Or do we hold it until 2022, um, which is the election year? Or do we push it to 2023? And we don't really need um, an answer on that today. We could take that to a committee if, if that's what council decides. I think based on the conversation, I, I, personally, I would, I would feel good bringing it back to a committee and having some further dialogue. I think you've given us a great deal of food for thought into the process and, and you know, the possibility of the longevity of the plan being critical as well. So unless I hear something different from council, I would suggest that we bring it forward for further discussion at a um, at whichever committee you feel we should take it to, Holly. Okay. Okay then. So we, okay, so Carla, um, we'll have to table that resolution then, right? We can do that. Okay. Yeah, I guess if we're not going to vote on it, I'll just table it. 
And then I'm sorry for I'm flipping for flipping through this. I just I thought it was important to add as much of it as we could. Um, this for those watching is the corporate uh, plan that um, is a great example. This is brand new 2020, um, and I actually was in touch with the CAO that put it together, and uh, they feel like it was a really successful process. Sorry, <sighs> trying to not flip too fast. Okay. Um, so this next one is the uh, internship. Um, the summary of that is we did get permission from NOHFC to extend the deadline if we choose. Um, there are some interesting um, economic development things happening. And I think through, um, through the COVID relief that's going to come, there will probably be more. Um, so you can see my, my recommendation is that we uh, update the job description and repost um, with the potential that it could be a, a uh, remote position. Um, so that's kind of all I have to say about that. If anyone has any comments or suggestions, Anyone? Sure, I, I could just add a bit. Go ahead, Councillor Bongo. Um, yeah, uh, so I, I, I completely understand how it's, um, uh, it's a very deflating feeling when, when you are unable to fulfill a position. So I, so I completely understand uh, the, um, what staff is going through to have to re-recruit um, but uh, as you said, Holly, I think that uh, there is a lot of background uh, online, remote research, grant research, um, all of that that could be done behind the scenes. Uh, and further to that, if this position is going to be 100% remote, um, as I did mention to you, and you can see my social media proposal, um, I do think that an ECH dev intern uh, could spend uh, a, um, a substantial amount of time uh, developing our social media strategy as well. So uh, I, I really believe that, that um, this position is a really, really positive thing uh, for the township. And uh, just a question for you, Holly, in the new job description, will there be mention of uh, social media responsibilities for this um, hiree? Um, so the thing about this position is it, it was created um, based on a set of requirement or a, a set of things that we wanted to accomplish. Um, so I don't think there was too much social media in that proposal to NH NOHFC. Now, having said that, there is um, there is obviously some leeway because of COVID. Uh, you know, requirements have changed, etc. Um, honestly, I think this is one of the items that we need to speak to strategically. Um, as far as social media goes, um, I know that it is kind of up and coming or it is a, a requirement from a tourism perspective, but I just want to be clear about what the accomplishment of social media is for the township because one year is probably enough time to get a good following um, and then that requirement doesn't go away. Um, so I think that we could do, as I've said in the report, we can do better. And we've been talking to staff through our, our website. We're hoping that our website update is going to um, provide much more usable community, better communication where um, there's a lot of things that we're trying to get on there. And what the website designers are suggesting is our social media should be directing people to our website, not the other way around. Um, so what they're telling us is, you know, other municipalities have realized how labor intensive social media is. And the more you can push people towards information that is kind of concrete, the less staff work it is. Um, so having said all that, I think that yes, we do need a social media plan, but I don't think dedicating 100% of one staffer's time for one year um, is what we want to set ourselves up for. Again, we can continue to have that discussion as we move forward with this person. 
So to answer your question, I will update it. I will include social media in the job description if NHOFC permits it. Super. Good. All right. That sounds really good. Um, go ahead, Holly. Um, so yeah, there's um, there's a, obviously a resolution in the in the package at the resolution section. Um, this last one, we talked a little bit in the committee meeting um, that uh, this is just kind of a summary of what we're hoping to accomplish in the 2021 budget. Um, we have heard about in addition to this um, just earlier in this meeting. So I just wanted to put this forward as we are starting the budget. We've already started the budget. Um, so I would just like some feedback and uh, either agreement that we are hoping to take this approach or some direction otherwise. Okay. I thought that the report reflected things that we have discussed recently through council. And um, I'd also like to thanks Jen for sending out the financial statements for the until the end of October so that we have a um, um, an update as to where we are financially within the township. So thank you very much for that. Any other, any comments in regards to this um, process that Holly has described and, and uh, where we're, as we go, start to get into our, our budgeting for next year? I have a comment. Go ahead, Councillor Florent. Uh, I understand the reasoning for putting, kind of putting things on hold for, a year or or may possibly more uh, but the longer we delay some of the repairs the more expensive it gets and we've already put off some of the repaving on major lake road for two years now if we put it off for another year the the final cost is probably going to be 30 or 40 percent higher than when we initially talked about it and for the most part it's just repaving and it really doesn't require too much work from our staff, it would it would likely be pretty well 100% from a contractor. And I, I think that's a fair comment and we can take that forward in the budgeting process and... Uh... Also, Dave had mentioned to me privately that it was almost time to resurface the streets in Madawaska again. And the, it's, it, the initial asphalt is cold mix asphalt and then it was overlaid with a I think it's called a double surface treatment, which is just tar and chip. And uh, again, the longer we delay, the more expensive it's going to be. Okay. And again, I that's something that our staff wouldn't be doing at all. It would be a, a private contractor. Okay. So Thank there's no that. drainage. There's no drainage or preparation on those projects, then, Joe. There may be some culvert replacement, but they, I don't think there's very many. Uh, but certainly there's probably some because the ones in Madawaska that was initially uh, paved with coal mix probably 30 or 35 years ago uh, so that's the age of those culverts that are in the ground for the most part. I think there's been a couple that have been replaced by our staff since then, but, but very few. Okay, thank you for those suggestions. So Holly, any, go ahead or any other comments? Uh, Mayor Dumas. Um, Councillor Shala. We've, um, initial um, term of council, we talked about various projects and the Hay Lake Road was on there and I'm not sure whether that is part of the drainage uh, improvements but also uh, <coughs> we're in dire need of gravel on uh, on all the other uh, roads within uh, Sabine Ward and uh, I don't know that's likely put on by various by a contractor also from a crusher to a to the road so how much time it would take from the township I, I really don't know maybe just a greater and so anyway I just um, I wasn't sure whether we were going to discuss that later at a, at a roads uh, or an asset management meeting or what but I didn't want us to slip by anyway. 
Thank you. I know Dave is listening and uh, this is the process. We need to take this to asset management for sure for the um, budgeting process as well. Anything else, Holly, on this? Uh, no, I guess I just want to be clear that um, <clears throat> the intention of this staff report was to to cut the capital back and focus um, on doing less this year. So I think what I'm hearing from Councillor Florin and Councillor Vermeer is that, or sorry, Councillor Shala and Councillor Florin is that uh, they're, they're not in favor of this staff report, so. So yeah, that's it. Um, this is coming up a resolution on the table. Yes, leave the resolution on the table, thank you. Um, so yeah, that's it for me, unless anyone has any other questions. Oh, so in addition to that, I did, uh, I did propose two, uh, two additional um, health days um, as outlined um, as COVID stress relief. We did receive some funding from the provincial government and they, um, they did indicate that it could be used for additional staff time. So that there's a resolution on the table about that as well, if, if anyone wants to discuss it. Well, just coincidentally, I had a call from our MPP, John Yakabuski, and talking about the COVID funding, and he certainly was, um, um, he, he did, ex he did ex explicitly express the, you know, the assurance that uh, we were looking after our staff and that the money was going forward and that it was supporting things that would be beneficial to our staff in the recognition of the stress and the changes in processes and uh, um all the concerns in regards to COVID. So I, I certainly think that this is a good recommendation as well. Any other comments? Hearing none, go ahead. Dave, are you on the line? Yep. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, everyone. Uh, we had a uh, job interview conducted on Monday the 2nd. And we have a uh, unanimous choice from the hiring committee that there is a resolution in the package um, for that position. Um, we are still looking for a council volunteer for the interviews on the 24th. If anyone would like to contact me about that. We have all our equipment prepared for the winter season. We've been out sanding a little bit with this, uh, this cold weather and a bit of snow, but we're warming up to double digits again. So we're gonna get back to uh, a few projects we'd like to complete, um, heading to Sabine and Elm Lake. Uh, end of this week and uh, through next week and carrying on with grading in some key spots. Uh, just I'll take a moment right now to mention that I have had some uh, feedback from the MNR about uh, our requests for uh, a trailer storage area in the Elm Lake area, and they are telling me they're going to be getting back to us with something, and I, I hope to bring that to the uh, asset management meeting it's on the 25th. Under environmental services, uh, we we sort of had a uh, the new program presented to us two weeks ago. Um, it, it came up fairly quickly. Uh, so on Wednesday, uh, I was uh, informed that we'd be getting something called Super Sacks that I had never heard of before. Uh, the Super Sacks showed up on Friday. I did a little research before we saw them. They are... Uh, plastic bags that fold into containers that if you leaned on them with five pounds of pressure, they would squish. So I immediately expressed our concern to uh, the new program, which is the Electronics Products Recycling Association, that, you know, in our winter conditions here, uh, these are not suitable. They're, they're not really outdoor type of containers. They would be crushed by snow. Our staff would be cleaning them out at the beginning of every um, operating cycle. And uh, we did receive them on Friday, uh, realizing that we had to do something. We created a small area at the end of our reuse bins to put three in, in a temporary 
stopgap measure. Uh, our other bins have, the one from Erie has been removed and the other one from Madawaska will be removed on Monday. So they went and had a meeting in Toronto and uh, have offered us a solution to provide us with uh, shipping containers for each site at a cost of $2,500 each, including delivery, which is a fairly good price. Um, I don't see the super sacks as uh, anything we could, we could manage outside. We can't plow snow against them. Um, they're going to fill and freeze. Uh, there's no tops. So what I'm proposing is that we, uh, we accept this offer and buy a container for each site. Uh, I have since the writing of this report received written confirmation with the price and delivery. I think it can be done within existing budgetary means without going to reserves. Uh, so I'm just uh, informing council and there's a resolution on the, on the table to accept that or, or not, or we can have discussion on it now if you'd like. Dave, can I ask, are they expecting the super sacks to go into the container so that they can still be um, using a pump jack um, lifted out onto a cube van? Yes, they, they have to be, the pump jack can't operate on gravel. It can't operate on ice. You know, we have a foot of snow, it's not gonna happen. Uh, they're gonna fill very quickly. They, they've assured us they're gonna come pick these up regularly. So when we get three or four or five full, uh, you know, the truck is supposed to show up from Powassan and pick them up. I, I don't know that that's going to continue. They're, they're pretty keen. It's a new program, but just I can see short. Okay. So the container, we could probably put, you know, eight, nine or 10 of these things in before the container's full. And that would get us through the bad weather. And uh, Okay. Right. I have a question. Yeah. Go ahead, Councillor Florent. Uh, Dave, are these uh, shipping containers like a returnable thing? Is it a one-time fee of, of $2,500 per, or do we have to keep purchasing them as they get full? It becomes our asset, and we own it forever. Uh, we can sell it if this program changes, uh, but it would just stay there permanently, and they unload it by backing up to the double doors and taking these containers out from within it. Well, what would be the difference between that and what we have now? Uh, nothing other than we're giving up space within our reuse containers to house these. So we've taken up about 10 feet of the end right now. And uh, that would only allow us to set up four of these sacks. Well, I think, but, you know, three PVs is going to fill a sack. Why wouldn't we be using our electronic container? Why would we be using the reuse container? The electronic container has been taken away because we didn't own them. So Miller owned the one at the Airy site. It's already been removed and uh, it's not coming back. And uh, the one in uh, Madawaska site is owned by another company and it is also going to be removed as of Monday. Okay. I wasn't aware that we didn't own them. I thought that we had bought them. No, we didn't buy those. Okay. So like on the surface, a $5,000 fee to collect a thousand dollars worth of electronics doesn't really add up, but if we're going to have them forever, uh, in five years, they would pay for themselves. Correct. And I just, I just saw, you know, a tremendous amount of attended time trying to clean out these sacks, uh, at each operating cycle. They just suggested pulling the tops of the bags over. And, you know, if we get six, eight inches of heavy snow, you know, and uh, it also opens us yeah, up to they, vandalism. Yes, they certainly have to be inside another container. I agree. David, it's it's Jane. I, I know that you will be watching this and staff will be watching it closely. Like I've seen televisions in that former storage area that wouldn't fit into a three by three by um, three by like there's some really old huge televisions that were in those in that uh, collection building be tank before. So I think this is going to be um, rather an onerous process until they get all the glitches worked out. But 
I, I commend you for move, for moving quickly on this and getting something that will you know work for us and our staff in the upcoming winter season. Like one good freezing rain would would dissolve or, as you say, crush those bikes down. So so thank you. Any other comments to Dave or, or go ahead, Dave? If there's further you want to say. Oh, I, I just I brought that very question up with them about the old projection screen TVs, mm -hmm. and their suggestion was just to leave them outside and they would pick them up separately. But uh, I still think if we have a container, we would put them inside. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, just carrying on to the uh, road projects from this year, we've uh, pretty well at the end of our, our uh, costing coming in and uh, they are tracking within budgetary allowances, which uh, I think is good news from where we sat this year um, and that we are going to carry on with uh, some other projects as I mentioned we're going to be heading to Sabine to complete a project this Thursday and Friday and then we hope to get from there to Allen Lake and see what we can do I, I haven't been able to see what the state of the trailers are but uh, we have a bit of maintenance we'd still like to get done before snow flies and with if this warm cycle stays we'll, we'll carry on with other uh, things. All right. Any questions or comments to Dave? Hearing none, thank you, Dave. That's excellent. We're grateful for getting a week that's going to allow some catch up stuff to happen for sure. Are there any members of council that have a report for anything that they might have been involved in? No, all right, thank you. Mayor, I'd just like to say something if I could. Okay, go ahead, Councillor Vermeer. Um, I just want everyone on council to know that we had a, uh, a very serious medical situation on Allen Lake um, a couple of weeks ago and um, uh, ambulance was called and I just want to refer that uh, there was no problem finding the address. Um, they did know exactly where to go so obviously the GPS coordinates are working. That's all I wanted to say. Thank Perfect. you for that feedback. That's good to hear. Thank you. Perfect. Any any other council members? Okay. So we'll go ahead then, Holly, with the agenda. Okay. Um, I just we did business arising from the minutes and unfinished business of council. Anything? Okay, so now we are into the action items. And this is the shoreline allowance, um, shore, shore road allowance. And so did we want any comments on that at this point in time? No, okay. And uh, the information items were in the green sheet on your package and that's where we, where as I mentioned, the um, Roma Council is noted there. And as I said, I would really encourage council members to look at that. And also there are webinars since what Holly's going through now are the webinar sessions for members of council. Uh, if there's anything there that you're interested in, please let staff know. And, um, okay. And, This one, Holly, if you could just hold it for a minute there. Uh, if you look down on this, you will see that uh, the annual conference is uh, council's opportunity to get updated on, impacting, on issues impacting rural communities. This year, the program will include broadband, flooding, senior services and aging in rural communities, community safety and well-being plans, waste, full producer responsibility, tying into our previous discussion, OPP uh, matters, municipal impact of cannabis growing, the digital government and virtual meetings, community paramedicine, big, ish, big um, pro pro pilot project in our, our area with Renfrew County and South Algonquin, an implicit and explicit bias. So again, uh, you know, in the past, it meant going to Toronto or, or wherever the conference was being held. So if there are any members of council wishing to participate, uh, please let staff know as soon as possible and registration can occur. Thank you. 
So um, I'll go through these action I or sorry, this, these information items. I just also wanted to bring to council's attention um, that our CEMC, Brian, has created um, a summary package um, and the he has updated the HIRA. Um, so as you all know, we generally have a, uh, a meeting, two meetings in the fall, or I think some years we've done it one fall and one spring um, to update the uh, emergency management program and do our um, our required desktop study. So the province this year, because we've all been living and working in an emergency situation most of the year, has um, kind of allowed us to use that as our training. And so I think Brian's intention is to provide you with this information um, with the intention that we'll pass the resolutions and bylaws in the December meeting. So um, now that you've all had an opportunity to do, review it, I just wanted to ask if you feel that we should have a committee meeting to talk about this information, or if you would rather just interact with Brian and um, let him know any of the comments you have on this um, or how we should go forward with it. Um, I'll open the conversation there. Any comments from council? I have one. It, it's a very lengthy report, and to be honest, I haven't uh, reviewed it that well yet. It's uh, like it's almost 200 pages. Uh, like it's going to take a long time to go through it all and analyze it, and then come up with comments. Mm -hmm. And it, I guess the question is: Would you prefer to continue to do that on your own, or should we uh, organize a meeting in regards to this this explicitly itself? So. Just to be I would like to review it on my own first. So okay. just to be clear, the balance of those 200 pages are the document that we have reviewed every year. So Brian has just made an effort to provide you the changes specific to this year. So we do it, we update this every year. Um, and this is his effort at, at indicating where you should put your attention or what has actually changed. Um, so yeah, we can, um, we can, give you a bit more time and decide at the next committee meeting. Um, the only the only thing we need to be cognizant of is that they, the resolutions and the bylaws need to be passed by the end of December. And I think that's achievable. Um, I've been looking through it as well. And as you say, it's it's um, just the updates that have, that are being implemented into this um, from what was changed from last year, so. Okay, so I, I think as we, uh, I would suggest or recommend that we go forward with having these uh, resolutions at our next meeting in December, our next regular council meeting. Great. I just have a quick question. Go ahead, Councillor Bongo. Uh, are we going to be doing uh, the uh, tabletop exercise? Is that an annual thing just to make sure that we are, you know, on top of our emergency preparedness protocol? So no, actually, the, the province has indicated that because we have been working in a situation where we've been in an emergency situation since March, that they are going to take that this year as um, the practice that we should be doing that we do in those three hours. Um, so we won't be doing a tabletop exercise this year. And when you review the plan, it has always been uh, included in the plan that uh, an episode uh, similar to COVID was always one of the risks of, uh, you know, being becoming an emergency process. And Brian, or Brian has been involved or was involved through the whole process of, of developing our COVID response plan as well. So um, as Holly said, I think we've covered it quite well, but certainly read through it and get back to Brian if there's any comments. Okay, thank you, Holly. Okay. So at this point, we're at, I know you, at item 12, uh, any new business from council? Hearing none. So now we will go into the motions of council. And um, I have this motion moved by Councillor Shalla and seconded by Councillor Harper. Be it resolved that the council for the corporation of the township of South Algonquin authorizes staff to proceed with the application received for the purchase of the unopened shore road allowance in front of Lyle Plan M382 
lot 19, parcel 22237, Nipissing in the geographic township of Lyle, locally known as 101 Woodland Lane as circulated in the council package. Um, any discussion on this? Hearing none, I would call the vote. Uh, Councillor Collins? Four. Thank you. Councillor Florent? Four. Councillor Harper? Four. Councillor Bongo? Four. Councillor Shalla? Four. Councillor Vermeer? Four. It's carried. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, the next one. Okay. So in the resolution I had moved by Councillor Vermeer and seconded by Councillor Collins. I think that we had decided that we would table this. And oh, I'm sorry. The council meeting. Okay, thank you. Sorry, committee meeting. Yeah, so this item has been tabled. Um, the next resolution, let me see here. Moved by Councillor Harper, seconded by Councillor Bongo. Be it resolved that the Council for the Corporation of the Township of South Algonquin hereby direct staff to provide all the employees two wellness days, one in 2020 and one in 2021 using provincial COVID-19 funding. Any discussion? Hearing none, I would call the vote. Councillor Collins? Four. Councillor Florent? Four. Councillor Harper? Four. Councillor Bongo? Four. Councillor Shala? Four. Councillor Vermeer? Four. And I'm four and it's carried. The next resolution. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. All right, uh, this I had moved by Councillor Florence, seconded by Councillor Bongo. Be it resolved that the Council for the Corporation of the Township of South Algonquin hereby accepts the 2021 budget planning staff report and direct staff to develop a 2021 budget, um, budget based on the report. Any discussion? There I were thought we were going to talk about some of that at an asset management meeting. Well, I think that we can say that there were suggestions made that had for consideration in the in the discussions in regards to Dave's report and Holly's. I, the, Holly, do you need we think we need um, to add that in? I don't know if we should amend this. Um, I think I'm not really. I, I guess um, if you want to vote to take it to a committee meeting, we should amend this resolution, but we can definitely- I guess what I'm getting at is I would like to, I'd like to be, uh, to be a little clearer as to exactly what we're, it's pretty broad what we're talking about. And I just think we should be uh, possibly clearer and uh, as per ward, what we're gonna do. I have a comment too. Go ahead, Councillor Florent. Uh, this is the uh, the staff report that suggests that we put everything on hold as far as capital projects are concerned. And I am in complete disagreement with that. Like I said before, every time you delay something, the cost goes up. Uh, I think it's, uh, it's pretty timely that we just completed uh, like complete rebuild of three roads in Whitney and then we want to stop everything in the rest of the township. And that's the way I look at it. And forgive me if you think that I'm being biased, but I am. And uh, I think we have to continue with repairs, maybe not so much in-house repairs, but especially contracted repairs. Thank you for your comment. Any other comments? So perhaps we should do, table this um, discuss it in detail at the committee meeting. We do have a committee meeting in two weeks. I'm happy with doing that. Is that agreeable with the rest of council or should I call the vote on this? I, I'm, I'm happy to discuss it further. Well, I, 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 we've heard you, Councillor Florent and Councillor Shalla. Any other comment from other members? Yeah, I'll go ahead. Councillor Bongo? Uh, yeah, I'm perfectly fine to uh, to save this for another meeting in two weeks. Um, I, uh, you know, I 
I feel for the uh, for the roads that still do need work, and uh, if if there's some sort of amicable solution that we can come up with, uh, I would be for that. So yeah, I look forward to discussing this again uh, at a later date. Okay. Anyone else? So we will table this for the asset management meeting coming up on um, in two 25th. weeks. Twenty fifth. Twenty fifth. Twenty fifth. Okay. Thank you. All right, so what's next? Okay, so the next resolution is, um, I had that moved, let me see here, sorry, moved by Councillor Collins and seconded by Councillor Shala. Uh, staff had informed me that the hire is, uh, I will read the resolution, but the hire recommendation is Josh, Josh Drew. So the resolution would be, be it resolved that the Council for the Corporation of the Township of South Algonquin accepts the hiring committee's recommendation to hire Josh Drew as the part-time landfill site attendant position. Any discussion? I would call the vote, Councillor, Councillor Collins. Oh. Councillor Florent. Four. Councillor Harper. Four. Councillor Bongo. Four. Councillor Shala. Four. Councillor Vermeer. Four. And I'm for the resolution is carried. And this is where we would add in the resolution that uh, Holly distributed earlier this morning or yesterday in regards to, um, um, oh, the letter, re uh, sorry, yes, thanks Holly. Uh, the letter regarding our uh, Lyle landfills uh, transfer. So I had this moved by Councillor Shala and seconded by Councillor Harper. Be it resolved that the Council for the Corporation of the Township of South Algonquin directs staff to send the November 3rd, 2020 letter, request for MPP assistance Lyle landfill transfer to MPP Yakabuski's office. Any discussion? Hearing none, I would call the vote. Councillor Collins. Uh, just, a, just a second, Mayor. Okay, Councillor um, Shala. It, are, are we, um, I, I read the letter and I read the car, the correspondence we want to forward. Um, I didn't think the resolution was a complete sentence, um, made my suggestions overnight. But anyway, uh, when you look at the, the correspondence that we're going to forward, I believe the first or second, if you drop down wherever it is, uh, I don't believe one le uh, one letter is should be included in this. If you drop down to where, um, keep going down, down. Can you give me an idea of what you're looking for, Richard? I'm looking for, I believe, um, uh, 2020 or wherever, somewhere there, right? Uh, right. Well, I think believe it's number one or two. Keep working up. That's I, well, what I see is twenty-five to thirty-two. One and two are nineteen ninety-nine. Sorry. Uh, right. What are you looking I for? I don't. Right there. I don't believe that. Um, I don't feel. uh n number two i don't think that should be part of this pro uh, summary yeah the one where it says mnr uh the township sends a letter to mnr mnrf telling telling mnr that the landfill is not needed or should be closed why should that not be correct. included richard I don't b believe it has anything to do with this landfill site. At the time of amalgamation, there was two landfill sites. Uh, I think in general, one was called Madawaska and one was called Lyell at Mackenzie Lake. And I believe that's the Mackenzie Lake one. Okay, good point. It was closed shortly after. We was open for maybe a year and a half or two years and then um, so it's it was Joel, also you may in, recall that it was also in Lyle yes okay 
There were quite a few uh, notes. So the, re the reason the that I included that was because the response was um, that you have been operating it and you are obligated to continue to operate it. So that's why I added that mm -hmm. because this letter, it was their response to that. Well, it okay, says the township I... will be responsible for all future work on the site, including operations, closure plans, and monitoring to MOE standards. So oh. it, it read to me like we were saying, we don't want it, you can keep it. And then they sent this response almost immediately that said, oh no, it's yours and you're responsible for it. And then they continued to not give it to us. I... Joel, maybe, could you help me out here? I don't think we ever declined from the Lyell one, the one in Lyell, and actually they were both in Lyell. And I thought that this one, just about the, in time, the way this is all falling in order, following in order, or that it, it may have been the Mackenzie Lake site they were, that Harold was referring to, that we didn't need any longer, and it could be closed. Uh, if I but, can, or maybe what you could do before you send this out <laughs> is you could have a look at the file. If there's anything on the one at Mackenzie Lake, there may be something to show when it was closed. But I know it operated for. I would say a year or better, maybe even two. Same with the one at Hay Lake and, uh, and, and uh, Aylan Lake. They operated for a short period after amalgamation. And, uh, and I just thought that that one was, just seemed like it was- This would have been six that, years after amalgamation. Pardon? This would have been six years after amalgamation. No, it's oh. only two years. Amalgamation was 98. Okay. It, it just seems to fit right into when the one at uh, uh, with the one at Mackenzie Lake in Lyell was closed. Okay. Can I, can I add something here? Um, from my point of view, it just confuses matters because I didn't know about another one at Mackenzie Lake. And for someone reading this for the first time and, and the history behind it, they don't understand that, that this is actually referring to somewhere else. Um, as I read it, I'm thinking, why on earth would the township have said that we don't want a landfill? Um, I, I was not aware of that there being two. So I think to remove it would, would remove any... Um, discrepancy there and, and make for easier reading definitely i fully fully agree mm -hmm. yeah. i will go back and i question it only because why would it be in this file but if you are uh, maybe me, all the new sites were in there was there any in there regarding no, Haley? i've never i've never heard any i don't know anything about the the other one there okay maybe yeah, i'm gonna I think about hay lake um, Hay Lake, I believe, closed immediately, and Ly and the one at Ma Mackenzie hung on for a period because uh, uh, Jerry was uh, at the time in charge, and he was having we had to have an attendant there, and I remember su uh, suggesting um, a local student that would uh, open and close it and gate it every night that went on maybe for about a year and a half. So. Uh, because we needed an employee and we didn't have one and uh, everything was happening in a hurry. And, but it, Mackenzie Lake did hang in there for a while. And I think Hay Lake switched immediately to Whitney and, um, mm -hmm. and then theirs was closed afterwards. So, yeah. but I know Hay Lake uh, or Mackenzie Lake uh, dragged on for a period before it closed. Yeah. And okay. I, I, As I said, the only reason that I, had put it in at all was because uh, it was the ministry reiterating that we were going to be responsible even though they continued to own the property so if you i'll go th back through the file and if i can't confirm that this is the proper landfill i'll just remove it 
Okay. I think that the gist of what I'm trying to say here is that we've been trying to do this since 2000, since 1999. Staff and council have put in an extreme amount of effort into it, and we're no further ahead than we were in 99. That's the point of this letter. Oh, I fully agree and appreciate your efforts right here with uh, putting this all together, Holly. I'm not knocking it at all. It's just all I'm saying is I think it would be less confusing if that letter wasn't in there. Okay. Good points. Can I, can oh, I maybe ahead. clarify a few points? Go ahead, Councillor Florent. Uh, it's just coincidental that those other sites were closing up at the same time. Some of them, in fact, had closed before. There used to be a waste disposal site at Macaulay Lake, yeah. and it was closed up, uh, I think, around 1995, quite a while before amalgamation, because the local services board had taken over uh, looking after the dump in Lyle and the dump in Macaulay was within the local services board area. So it was one of the first ones that closed up and the one at Lyle Lake closed up around the same time. And then at amalgamation, uh, the other ones closed up like the one, like Richard said, the, the one at Allen Lake, the one at Hay Lake, and then the one at Mackenzie Lake. Yeah, I think it's just coincidental that they were all about the same time. I don't specifically remember this letter uh, and I would have been on council when that was, was written, as Richard was too. Uh, but I think it may have been a ploy to try and force the MNR's hand because even back then, we were trying to get ownership of that property instead of simply managing an MNR site. Uh, uh, so it, 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 if it was omitted, it wouldn't take anything away. Uh, I think I that's what that I thought, could. Joe. That's what I assumed yeah. when I read it. I thought that was they, that it was the council shrugging their shoulders saying, okay, well, you keep it. And then, as I said, I thought that this next letter was them saying, oh, no, we're not going to keep it. So that's exactly the thought process that I was going through when I included it. But again, I'll, I'll if I can't confirm that it's appropriate, I'll remove it. Good. I'm okay with it either way. It just it just seems to stick out that that letter in all the and right off off the top of the correspondence as well. So personally, I feel if there's nothing to substantiate it being there, it, it would be better to take it out as well. So any other discussion? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so we're at uh, item agenda fourteen, which is notice of motions. Are there any notice? Oh, I think we. Need Sorry, we need to pass this resolution. Uh, sorry, I didn't call the vote. I apologize. Okay. Um, all right. Did I read? Did I read so, the resolution? I will read it again. All right. Do we want to use the term "and amended"? Amended as discussed. Yes, I think so. Okay, so I had this resolution moved by Councillor Shalla and seconded by Councillor Hart. Be it resolved that the Council for the Corporation of the Township of South Algonquin directs staff to send the November 3rd, 2020 letter um, as amend amended as directed. Uh, request for MPP assistance Lyle Lake Landfill transfer to MPP Yakabuski's office. Any further discussion? I would, right. want, I would, would it uh, be more, would it look better if we put uh, our MPP's name in there? Oh, if yes. we're asking for his help, yes. I think we, at least we could do is put his name in there. Fair enough. So it would read MPP John Yakabuski's office. Anything That's else? Like, I think that would be more appropriate. Thank you. Anything else from council? Then I would call the vote. Councillor Collins? Oh. Councillor Florent? Four. Councillor Harper? Four. Councillor Shalla? Four. Um, Councillor Bongo? Four. And Councillor Ramir? Four. Did I miss someone? Nope. No. One. Okay, it's carried. Thank you. Okay. Uh, um, sorry, um, the, 
it's been just emailed to me that we didn't have a resolution for the economic development intern. It was intended that we would do that. Um, so council is welcome just to direct me in the minutes or we can, I, I can read out the resolution, whatever you choose. Uh, let's go with the resolution then, Holly, please. Okay. Be it resolved that the Council for the Corporation of the Township of South Algonquin directs staff to modify the economic development in term job description and advertise the position as a potential remote position. All discussion. Right. <laughs> Any discussion? I would need a mover. And I, could someone just say, I can't see, I, who would like to move this? I'll move it. It's Councillor Cal Bongo. Councillor Bongo, seconder. I will. Councillor Florent, thank you. And Holly read the resolution. So any further discussion? <clears throat> Call the vote, Councillor Collins. Four. Councillor Florent. Four. Councillor Harper. Four. Councillor Bongo. Four. Councillor Shala. Four. Councillor Vermeer. Four. It's carried. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so we're at, uh, I didn't hear any declaration or indication of notice of motions. So now we are at um, number 15, the, the bylaw for the site plan amendment. And I have this moved by Councillor Harper and seconded by Councillor Florent. And uh, okay. Be a uh, first and second reading being a bylaw. Where is that down here? Okay. Being a bylaw to authorize the mayor and the CAO clerk treasurer to sign the site plan agreement with Doreen F. Rogers and Kyle R. Rogers, and that it be read a first and second time and be referred to the committee of the whole of council. Uh, Councillor Collins? Four. Councillor Florent? Four. Councillor Harper? Four. Councillor Bongo? Four. Councillor Shala? Four. Councillor Vermeer? Four. All right, it's carried. Uh, the third reading, being a bylaw to authorize the, mer the mayor and the CAO clerk treasurer to sign a site plan agreement with Doreen F. Rogers and Kyle R. Rogers as referred by the committee of the whole of council and that it be read a third time and passed in number 20-624 and signed by the mayor and the CAO clerk treasurer sealed with the seal of the corporation and be entered into the bylaw book. Any discussion? Excuse Hearing me, that? Jane. Yes, uh, Carla. Can you just repeat who you had moved and second both of those? Oh, okay. Um, the first one was moved by, the first and second reading was moved by Councillor Harper and Councillor Florent. And the third reading was moved by Councillor Bongo and Councillor Vermeer. Thank you. Okay. And uh, called, there was no discussion, so I would call the vote. Councillor Collins? Four. Councillor Florent? Four. Councillor Harper? Four. Councillor Shala? Four. Sorry, Councillor Bongo? Four. Councillor Vermeer? Four. So it is carried. Um, we're at number 16 on the agenda. There is no resolution required to move into closed session. Okay, so uh, Councillor, uh, sorry, res number 17, payment of accounts. I have, somebody's got background noise. Uh, Councillor Collins, moved by Councillor Collins, seconded by Councillor Harper. Be it resolved that the Council for the Corporation of the Township of South Algonquin authorizes the payment of all bills as recorded for the meeting of November 4th, 2020, batch 2020-00050 for $44,782.79, batch 2020-00052, for $483,360.56, batch 2020-00054, $319,939.41. Uh, calling the vote, Councillor Collins? Four. Councillor Florent? Four. 
Councillor Harper? Four. Councillor Bongo? Four. Councillor Shalla? Four. Councillor Vermeer? Four. It's carried. And agenda item 18, adjournment. Uh, resolution moved by Councillor Shalla, seconded by Councillor Florent. Be it resolved that the Council for the Corporation of the Township of South Algonquin adjourns the regular meeting of November 4th, 2020 at, somebody got the time? 10.27. Um, All in favor, Councillor Collins? Four. Councillor Florent? Four. Councillor Harper? Four. Councillor Bongo? Four. Councillor Shalla? Four. Councillor Vermeer? Four. That's carried. Councillor Shalla, my uh, congratulations to your grandson. You've come through loud and clear. Actually, I appreciate it because I was going to ask the question. Uh, was it? It was great? It was very good, yes. Everyone okay. was good. 